Well, thank you everyone for coming. My name is Jeff. I'm the founder and director over at Incently. We are the gamification plugin that you can see that's on the BII platform right now. So you at the moment are earning coins for taking actions on the platform. And if you look on the sidebar menu, you can check out the reward store uh, to go and see a number of offerings that are being provided by the sponsors and exhibitors to encourage you to be more engaged in the event as well as the, as you interact with those store items, you're also providing those exhibitors a, a lead generation source so they can see who is uh, showing interest in their products and services. And we also power the leaderboard uh, that really shows the standings and who's earned the, no the most coins. So we're really interested in improving the engaged experience by driving a behavior change there. So I was hoping to, I'm gonna show a, a couple slides just to kind of put a framework around what our strategy is and how we see gamification being a new, I'm gonna say uh, taking a different direction than what most event platforms are seeming to provide there. So I'm just gonna hop into a little slide deck here to I'm gonna sh just show my screen here. I'm assuming we are, it looks, it says I'm, I'm showing my screen here. So I'm going to assume that I am, unless I hear from you. So nope, we can uh, see it. good. Awesome. Thanks for confirming there. So as you, as you can see, I'm all about reimagining the gamification experience on the platform. So I just explained to you uh, a little bit about our platform in terms of our approach to gamification, but I don't really like the word I use it in titles to, to, because people kind of know what it is. I much prefer the idea of motivational design. And I think you'll see what I mean when we start to talk about the mechanics behind uh, the coin economy that, that, that you've seen. So a lot of event professionals are really concerned about engagements. The number one concern in all the surveys that I've read in the last year, especially as we go into the virtual, uh, virtual environments. And so, when you look at engagement, I think you really need to think about it in terms of the stakeholders, what their perspectives are on engagement, uh, depending on what role they're playing in the event. But where we come at it is in terms of a behavioral change, in terms of getting people to take actions. And those actions, we assign those coin values to. Ultimately, I think why people are concerned about engagement is ultimately it comes down to revenue. So we want to make sure that our uh, our events that we're they're part of is that the engagement process the increase in engagement will lead to increased revenues for all the stakeholders uh, that are participating an important part of what we do is looking at all the different types of event uh, offerings so i know this one is uh, obviously virtual but especially when we go to a hybrid system is that the technology that we work with, we're like a listening device. So it does not matter whether you are attending an event in person or online or in a hybrid uh, or the, the event is hybrid. The actions that those use that the people are taking on the platform will award coins in a very similar manner. So I think what's really important is if we're going to look at adding gamification or motivational design to an event is that it it will actually apply, I'm gonna say equally among all the different types of experiences. Again, looking at the, uh, the way that we can add this motivational design, I think really starts with the planners and full disclosure, I'm not, a, I'm not an event planner, but I am an attendee and as well as an exhibitor. And so I think depending on which hat you're wearing, the actions that you would like to see the users taking are going to be different. And so actually one, I'm gonna, um, in the chat here, I'm gonna see, I can't really see my chat here. Um, I see my chat at the same time as I'm presenting here. I'm gonna ask a question here is, what is that I left, I purposely left out one group here um, out of that. So we've got the planners, the uh, attendees and the exhibitors. I'm interested in, there's one other real, critical group of people. So here's an example of how we can use our platform. I can award coins for any reason what I, whatsoever on our platform during the event. So as a speaker, I can say, okay, um, out of those groups of people, there's one key group that's missing. So in the chat, first one to tell me what group was missing on that slide, I'll, I'll add 25 coins to your wallet um, to, to help facilitate the engagement. So we had 
just we had the planners, we had the attendees, we had the exhibitors and sponsors. There's one other key group of people that I did not put on that slide. See if you can come up with um, how, who are they and how can they play a critical role in the engagement piece. So I can see we've got a couple suggestion sponsors, but that was already on there. Event planner was already on there. Pardon me there, Chris? Entertainers? Entertainers? Well, they, they could be, a, but I'm going to talk about a major group. There's one other major group of people that was not on that slide that plays a critical role in the engagement piece at the event. Organizers? The organizers, Suppliers. I'm going to put them into the sponsors there. Sorry, what's that, Mary? Suppliers? The attendees. Maybe I'll put my slide deck back up there just to show you again. Not the, the suppliers I would put into the um, into the category of uh, exhibitors there. Any other suggestions there? The presenters. There we are, Sarah. You were you win some coins there. So me as a presenter, if you think about the speakers at the events, they also play a critical role in the engagement piece but they also are there for a reason. Either they have, maybe they're representing a company like myself. Uh, maybe they are, that's what their job is, is they wanna get rebooked into another event. And so uh, with our platform, like I'm gonna give Sarah 25 coins for, for the correct answer there, but we also can then help facilitate engagement during the session, but also kind of ongoing in terms of the whole duration of the event. So maybe Sarah comes and checks in with me at my booth as a as an exhibitor, and I can give her another 25 coins for having a meaningful conversation. So another really key group of people is, is thinking about how you can get the speakers, the presenters to uh, be more engaged with the audience and, and add that value to them. Um, let me just go back to my uh, slide, um, quick hop into my slideshow. Um, from the event planner's perspective, I really think the uh, the idea about using motivational design should be baked into your entire strategy from pre-event, in-event, and post-event. And so looking at the first part, that pre-event part, is that re really your interest is, is increasing the registrations. And so what we can do with Incently is uh, to, I'm going to say gamify that part, is we can add coins onto that that process. So as I said, we're like a listening device. So as this, as a attendee registers for the event, we can attach a coin value to that. And in terms of your strategy around pricing, people typically offer early bird pricing, but you can also then attach a higher coin value for people registering early. We also have built uh, refer a friend system. So as an attendee that's registered, I can earn coins if my friend successfully registers for the same event through a, uh, a referral email system that we built. So really driving that pre-event engagement, getting people to register is a critical part. The next uh, part as an exhibitor, even at this event, but I'm sure uh, as event planners go, you need to be mindful of like, how is it that we can add value to our exhibitors? So in our reward store, as people are making purchases with their coins, all of those transactions are showing up for the exhibitor under the products and services that they're offering. So it's a way for exhibitors to get themselves out in front of the audience, but it's also a way for people for the exhibitors to uh, to get a sentiment around how people are in engaging with their their products. For example, we put incently put a raffle draw item, a, a subscription to our, our platform as a raffle item. So every raffle entry increases the probability of someone uh, that they can win that but it also shows me uh, who's making those raffle entries and I can then follow up with people based on the interest um, that they're showing in our product. If you can increase those registrations as well as demonstrate a clear way for exhibitors to increase their ROI, it's a, it's a good way to then obviously look at how you can also make your, uh, the revenue increase based on just increasing those, uh, the registrations and, and the participation by the exhibitors. If your clients are seeing that the event is really successful, they're obviously more likely to increase uh, the number, the frequency of those events. And ultimately, if we can help attendees and exhibitors get more out of that experience, then we're better able to get them to come back to the next one. So that's the overall idea of how we can take, I'm going to say, motivational design and link it directly to improving event revenues. 
as attendees, I, I think it's really cool that you are event planners, but you're attending this event as an attendee. So experiencing it as the attendees would. Um, if you look at Incently, the actions that you're taking on the platform, if you go onto the reward store, there's a little info icon on the top right, and it'll tell you the rules behind like how do you earn coins on the platform. So you can earn in the VII event, uh, you can earn coins for all sorts of actions like attending sessions, uh, visiting the sponsors and exhibitors, uh, going around the map. Um, they've identified a coin economy to help drive those behaviors on the platform. The reason why I really like our platform's approach compared to a lot of others is, is that you give the, the economy comes into the attendee, but it gives them choice in how they want to spend those coins. So if you look in the store, one of the first things we offer is a fundraiser about event uh, wellness in terms of uh, mental health uh, contribution. So you can have donations, but you can also have uh, products and services. It's up to you and how you spend those uh, coins. Important is to think about in gamification, we have different player types or personas. And so knowing your audience and then giving them choice, but also uh, targeting the items and products specifically for those personas. And so one of the things that we can do on our platform is segment the users on the platform. So maybe you segment your users based on different geographies, but you can do it on based on different, uh, for example, divisions within a, an organization. And you can put a unique reward store in front of each of those segments. So as a, as a player going into the store, I'm getting shown the items that will be most relevant to me. And of course, um, leaderboards, uh, we're using them with the VII events, but they are they need to be used a bit carefully. Not everybody's interested in, in leaderboards. And so again, it comes back to that player persona. And should you use leaderboards, you better know if, you're, if your players are typically in the competitive nature. If they're not, my suggestion is, is that you turn leaderboards off and look at a more collaborative way of, um, of, of using leaderboards. So in our example, you can have those user segments, we call them teams. You can have teams on a leaderboard uh, that compete collectively together uh, versus other teams. And ultimately the last uh, slide for you today is to think about uh, the, how we can help exhibitors get the most out of uh, an event. And I know from some of the events I've been a part of, uh, there's a lot of exhibitors that have fallen by the wayside, they're just saying, uh, we just are not getting the leads that we need. And so the way that we encourage exhibitors to put their products and services in front of that audience, not only gives the incentives, obviously, for the attendees, but it also gives them a way to, uh, in another way to generate leads and interact with the audience. So I want to stop my slide deck, and then I want to open it up for a discussion on uh, event gamification. Uh, what have you seen? Um, uh, how does this, uh, how does the Incently experience so far compared to uh, some of the other, uh, maybe the the leaderboard systems that you've seen or other uh, other gamification strategies? I'd love to hear from you. I'll Don't start. Be shy. There you go. Someone brave to say hello. Um, no, it's it's early days, I guess, uh, looking at the platform, although I know I work with Stas and the team. Uh, I actually, this is the first time I've seen the platform and it's fully fully fledged setup in this this one. So I'm looking forward to to going around and having a look and, and seeing how it works. But I love the concept. Um, it's useful for me as a as a um, as a sponsor to also use it as an incentive and put up some products where people can come and buy and use their coins. So I'm, I'm excited to see how it works actually from a sponsor perspective. Um, awesome. Yeah, no, it's, I, th I think it's great. I think the, yeah, I, I love the, the concept. Yeah. That's yeah, there's two different uh, kind of needs there. The, the attendees as well as the sponsors, the, they're both, uh, I'm going to say, hopefully both finding the use case uh, valuable there. And thanks for putting stuff in the store too, by the way, Stuart. I have to say that, I mean, Jeff, if I, if I had not come into this session, I would not know what those coins were for. So it doesn't doesn't feel much like an interactive game. It feels so much like a passive game. Um, at other events, they've actually uh, it's not been a game throughout, or events that, that I've produced. It's actually a time given over to play, um, and it's not just for play. It's for a break from looking at the screen. Um, quite often, you're asked a challenge to go and find something funny in your house, something unusual, and, and show it. You know, and so it's like gets you out of your seat 
get you moving. It brings a bit more of a human feel to it. Um, I mean, you know, I, I, yeah, had I not come here, do you, is there a better way of letting people know that, that the game started before you've even, like, come in or... Yeah, that's a great a great point there, uh, Christopher. Is uh, I know uh, Stas put it on the video about highlighting that particular feature. One of the things um, we typically do on the integration is we actually put the coin count out a bit more visible, so you can see the coins coming out. Right now, they're kind of hit. Like the integration just happened like last week, so the only way to see your coin balance is by clicking on the store and seeing how many you have. So uh, on some of the other integrations we've built is we have a coin count that's visible on the entire platform and it's constantly going up. So it's a, it's a visual cue that you've earned, earned coins based on those actions. But you're right, there needs to be a, a bit of a framework put around introducing the concept to attendees as like, hey, this is happening across the platform for the entire event. Uh, and I think Stas tried to do that in the in the video, but you're right. There needs to be um, a, like a marketing uh, piece to that. I, I agree. Like a, an yeah, awareness. Yeah. Can I add something? Yeah. Like I, I heard my cue, I heard my name, so I can <laughs> turn my camera on. So I'm so glad we did this integration with Jeff. And like Jeff said, it's just like this week. And in general, we added so much new features. This, by the way, our first run of our new platform. We released the platform just last week. So uh, we decided instead of testing it on our customers' events, because we cannot afford any problems or any mistakes, we test it each year on our own event. And we loved Jeff's technology so much that probably uh, I haven't brought it to him, to him yet, but probably we're going to add it to our basic package and we're going to, like I'm announcing it here live, but we're going to work with Jeff to improve even more because I truly see how this value impacts uh, attendees behavior and sponsor value you can create a real true incentive for people to visit sponsors area visit and speak with sponsors and engage with them which normally is a little bit problematic on a virtual events like people go to sessions people go with different gamifications but many times the sponsors are left behind and jeff technology helps to fix that in a way in a way that is not uh, creating problems for people. It doesn't force them to do something. It engages them. So I love that uh, idea that Jeff brought uh, to us and we are proud to integrate with him. Thank you. That's awesome. Thanks, Stas. Christopher, I'm curious, what, what do you think would help uh, with the awareness part that you were mentioning? Well, I think, I mean, first of all, I mean, uh, gamification for me means that you actually are playing a game. Um, and there is, you know, uh, I say some some of the ones that I've done before even got joysticks out, you know, um, and there is a real game going on uh, within the organisation. But you have to know why your audience, you know, um, the the presenter needs to be part of that, um, part of the game, um, and it almost needs to trigger from the from the start. Um, so maybe there's a, there's a route in to the event that yes, you get your welcome video that opens. Um, especially maybe if it's, it's hybrid. I mean, maybe there's a way of, um, you say it's the same offering, whether it's a, a physical event, and as more and more events are going to be this hybrid for a short period, um, maybe there is a way of just, uh, you know, if you're at a, at a physical event, you can see the characters who are going to play, and maybe there's a way of, you can see the people who are interacting, you kind of grab them quickly and get them really motivated to take actions and they kind of lead the way and you use that to publicize it to other people. Um, maybe there's kind of like a, I don't know, I suppose, I suppose it's a positive feedback loop. Yeah. You know, that, that the people who are, who are getting it and understanding it, they help you promote it um, because they get more coins by doing so. But then you use that and your presenters and everybody across the platform is also joining in on that game. Um, to, me, to me, it just seems very passive just by turning up here i'm getting coins i don't know why i'm getting coins i haven't done anything <laughs> yeah um, well it, and i'm not even sure how you are earning coins yeah. like Great. it's called like oh you earn 10 for visiting a sponsor 20 for going to a session 
something, something, something. So, you know, yep. I see people have like 3000 coins and I'm like, how did they get those? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. If you look at the info, there's a little info icon on the top right hand corner of the store. The rules for how the coins are awarded are, are displayed there. So that is a part two is communicating the economy for sure. Uh, Chris, I'd like to highlight that a lot of people in the event industry are throwing the word around gamification and they're actually using it incorrectly. So what you've experienced is called is really like game based learning or game based entertainment. If you're getting out a joystick and you're actually playing a game, Incently is built on what's called structural gamification and structural gamification is where you award points or coins. In our case, we have a virtual economy for actions taken. So it's not a game. It's adding game-like elements to facilitate behavior change. And so there's a really big disconnect in the event industry. People are saying gamification and they're blanketing it with uh, all the, the category of like spin the wheels and trivia and those types of games that are meant for entertainment. And I'm gonna they're fun, but where Incently comes at it is, is we're encouraging people to take actions. That's those are the actions that award those coins but there's a direct connection to keeping people doing those actions in the event. And then we're also tying in a, a value add for the sponsors and exhibitors for putting their products and services There's a way to then spend those coins. A lot of systems have leaderboards and obviously the points just kind of accumulate. All the research shows that only a handful, a small percentage of people are genuinely interested in leaderboards, like from the general public. And if you are then applying structural gamification to just a small portion of your audience, then the effect is very minimal. If you give people choice in a, in a spending economy like we've provided, then it applies, then the, the choice goes to the attendee and they can spend it how they choose. But you'll see a lot of offerings that are, they call it gamification and they're actually game-based entertainment versus structural gamification that is designed for behavior change. Like, encouraging registrations, for example. That's one like huge thing that we can help with in terms of just um, adding actions to the, I'm gonna say, or encouraging those actions. Jeff, uh, Jeff, I have to break you. I hate to break you because we are starting now in next activity. There is going to be a speed networking for a one-on-one -on -one in the main area. You can go and access Twine. Twine is a speed networking ability for joining one-on-one -on -one sessions or for the people who want to stay here and continue the discussion with Jeff, you are welcome. But uh, I will hate that you'll miss this activity because it's uh, another very amazing tool that it, we have integration with and it allows to do random meetings with one of one. I'm looking forward, guys, to see you all there. And Jeff, it was an amazing session. I'm so proud of our friendship and partnership. I'm looking forward to see you there. I'm going to join awesome. the meeting now. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Stas. Really appreciate it. Yeah, I'll stay around for a few minutes if anyone wants to chat. But otherwise, uh, definitely message me and, and connect with me at the booth as well or on LinkedIn. That's really great, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks a lot for coming, everyone. Thanks, Christopher. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. I was Miri, just, just going to say the other piece of feedback is I didn't even know the store was there. I think yeah. Stas might want to know, like, the, the scroll bar blends really well. So it's like I just thought it ended at leaderboard. So I didn't, I didn't even know that there was other. Oh, you mean stuff. like the on the bottom of the menu? Yeah. So it's like it's a um, scroll bar and it yeah. cuts off at leaderboard and then store is the only other thing beyond it. Interesting. So like yeah, I but, hadn't even seen it. I, I don't know that I even would have saw it if you hadn't said that there was a store and I went to look for it. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah, that's great feedback yeah. there, Lacey. I know where I'm going to be working with staffs about kind of improving some of the design elements there. Um, so I think that's, yeah, very well, valuable. Feedback. I just think you need... You, you, it needs a roadmap in to the event. If it's going to be a structural part of the event, you yeah, need to find a mechanism to road roadmap it so that actually you you can't even attend anything or do anything until you've been educated, if you like, that it's Some going more, on. Yeah, I I think that's really good feedback there, Christopher. I know some of the events that have used it that I've been a part of, they speak about it in the beginning. I'm and jump out. Sorry to yeah. Thanks, Stuart. Sure. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Uh, on. The, even the, yeah, thanks a lot. The presenters are are kind of told to uh, really drive the economy. Like I'm going to hand out coins all the time for all sorts of reasons, and you can get creative on like why. Like it could be answering a question, uh, but in terms of the automation, like we're a listening device. Like you've like I've mentioned, 
we're limited based on what are the actions that the platform can can mm -hmm. tell us uh, tell us about. So there's kind of like two parts to the there's an automated part, but then there's the manual ad, and I think there's a human element to that. And so communicating that that uh, you know presenters can hand out coins or the exhibitors can hand out coins, like beyond above and beyond the automation side. Mm -hmm. I think that that puts a like a cultural framework around like how do you drive engagement at the the event and I agree I think it needs to be kind of broadcasted from the beginning and in Stas's video he had all these things to say but it and it was in the it was kind of in the yeah. end but you had to you had to go through a couple minutes of watching a video before you really saw that so well uh, I, I know I know using other platforms like Brella and hopping in that you know we um, giving out awards for the most active person. And right. that's just from our own kind of like tracking devices, you know, and being in the back end of a system, you can see who's doing what yeah. and you call their name. They, they get to, you know, a free three minute pitch or two minute pitch to pitch their product service, whatever they want to yeah. everyone. Um, and that was their reward. Um, but again, you know, we never really publicized it. That was just, oh, so-and-so has been such a good player. But after we did it a few times, People got got the idea that it was yeah. something worth having, you know, something they really wanted to to have. Yeah, and that's the thing about the reward stores. You can put anything in there, and so it could be that you like the reward is is you get to pitch in the last five minutes about yeah. your particular yeah. product and service. That's where the creativity comes around. Is like, what is it that is. I'm going to say interesting or appealing to that particular audience. And if you can make it in the reward store and the, the way to get that is by doing those actions that you've identified, mm -hmm. like this is, so you're not having to look on the back end to try and figure it out. It's actually the, the attendees get the, I'm going to say the autonomy to choose that they can, they mm -hmm. can select that item as something that they're interested in. Uh, and that's where I think the, uh, Again, I think there's a culture around an event that, especially if the event is, you know, uh, one that's continuous, I think it builds on itself because I, like, for the example, this is the first event that Incently is being a part of. And so, okay, this is new. A lot of people don't even know about it. Well, what if we were to use it again and again in every event going forward? then there's almost like this anticipation or expectation that that is part of the event. And then not only like the attendees get more familiar with it, but the same with the exhibitors and sponsors, like they start to figure out, oh, these products and services are definitely what we want to put there. That's how it's worked in some of these events that we've done it continuously with is that there's a culture that builds around it uh, and people start to understand more. So uh, I think your comments are really resonating with me because I'm meeting with staffs next week and it's like, okay, well, like, how do you make it so people are more aware? Well, it's, of it's, it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, our, our role, we're one of the largest entertainment providers in the corporate sector. So we spent the last two years designing exactly what you said, entertainment elements to yeah. virtual events. And so that's what we've been coming up with. And, you know, we've come up with some weird and wonderful things um, to, to get people to kind of, yeah, not kind of switch off um, from the interaction. And, you know, you know, avatars and things like that and nice graphics no longer cut it. You know, people want to be feeling like they're either doing something or they have the on in the background. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, to begin with, everybody was very excited. You know, I know the first few that I did, it was like all brand new, but then that soon wore off after about six months. Um, but to structurally build it in, that there is some sort of reward at the very beginning. I just needs it needs that little roadmap of how um, you grab everybody's attention. Yeah. And and with virtual events, as you probably know, people join halfway through. Some people join for ten minutes and they're off. It, yeah. it, it's it's not like joining a session where you know you stand up and you're a bit nervous walking out because everybody's <laughs> listening. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's funny the what you're saying about it, like this engagement piece and how people are approaching it is like we we kind of fell into the event space only in the last year. We've been working in e-learning. So all of our main projects is about getting people to register to take courses and to complete them. So it's about learner engagement. 
And we fell into the event space because these learning platforms have their own events that they ran the ran it on, and they asked us to use our platform, and we saw the success with the engagement at the event. But what's interesting is is in the event space, I'm going to say games or or entertainment games are mm -hmm. like that that does not exist in e-learning. That like not at all. It's it's very much specific to the event space. But I keep looking at them, and and I think. A, they're really they're costly to make. They're they're very um, capital intensive to make a dedicated game to do one thing. But I also think about the like the stickiness or the staying power of them. Like if you go and play a game, like first of all, it's you know maybe a few minutes, but it might be entertaining, but it doesn't necessarily connect with the I'm going to say the outcomes or the actions that. The other stakeholders really want like mm -hmm. in terms of a planner i want them to go to the most sessions i want them to engage in chat i want them to engage with sponsor all those actions and i want that continuously i don't want it just for five minutes i want it for a lot like the entire event and then the other part is is I want the the user experience to be such that if they get if they do more of those actions they get more out of the content and the event and will hopefully realize, oh, this was a lot of value for me. I'm definitely coming back to the next one. So it's actually trying to nudge people, the attendees, to actually get more out of the event so that they're more likely to come back. So there's Yeah, and I can see I can see great value in that. You know, I, I really can. And I and I think that uh, you know, the word gamification does you know, across the events industry, just so you know, does actually mean that there is some form of game going on throughout the event itself. But I think it's also, you, you alerted to it, which was the idea of having a leaderboard could embarrass people who don't particularly want to yeah. partake and it could kind of drive other people to be quite kind of like competitive. So I think there is something where Personally, you can see you're gaining, you're calling them coins, they could be called whatever, you know, but you're gaining these points, coins, whatever, um, and they have value in the real world. You know? yeah. um, so actually, you know, I, I can get a discount for the next physical event. So it might be that you do yeah. um, one of, one of the, the marketing tactics that I use in, in the event space is to do virtual events, small ones, as marketing tools for a bigger event later on in the year for sure and, and and this could actually be a great like integration into like if you keep coming to these little virtual events and partaking you get 10 15 percent off your ticket price absolutely so that's like what you're getting at is like the entire there's a massive marketing strategy behind our tool as well as the i'm going to call it the pre-event stage so mm -hmm. in terms of getting people to come into your event you, we actually, I didn't get, I mean, I could talk for hours about this stuff, but our platform can also connect to any other platform besides the event platform. So we can listen mm -hmm. to actions taken on payment platforms to marketing platforms. So if you say make a payment, you can earn coins for making a payment. You can earn coins for submitting a type form survey. You yeah. can connect it all to the same user for exactly what you're saying is so we can build a that's why I call it motivational design. I didn't have time to get into everything today, but the idea is, is that you start to look at what behaviors do you want to incentivize? And then it's about building this continuous engagement model. So everything mm -hmm. pre-event, like maybe you attend a webinar, we're going to add coins to your wallet. Yeah, yeah. And in the yeah. store, in our reward store is that discount up to the event itself. So this, the reward store can change over time depending on what stage you're in, in the engagement marketing cycle. So that's where it, it's the, what it, like you kind of take a step back. What is it that we're, tr we're trying to encourage or to achieve and when? Mm -hmm. What platforms are we wanting to connect to? And then how do we then, it's like, it's, it's basically a funnel building into the event, right? But think of it after the event too. Post event, you could do the same thing. So yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, I mean, I mean, but that but you used the phrase, the term that, that that sprang out to me was it's structurally built into you know a long term event plan. Yeah. 
Now, the, the one thing with events at the moment, they are very reactive, which is not how event the events industry works. And the event industry will no. return back to its normal form. Um, at the moment, we're all kind of, uh, we had a big boom, um, you know, after laying everybody off for years. And then we yeah. had a big boom of suddenly inquiries overwhelmed our company completely with number of yeah. inquiries, number of bookings. We couldn't get enough artists uh, to get COVID tested, to take them to all these different places in the world to do these events. Um, and then we had cancellations with uh, yeah. the main variant and it just all canceled apart from in the Middle East. They, they continued um, with the, the events there, which was great for us. That at least kept us you know, going. Um, but we we're starting to see, you know, um, inquiries and confirmation of small bookings at the moment but to build this into um clients who have got at the moment you know they're still doing virtual they're, they're toying with the idea of confirming booking some physical in different territories yeah and that leads to an even bigger event where they're going to do their annual event but they're not going to do it in 2022 they're going to aim for 2023 right um so there is a long running which is normal for an event you know, yeah which Takes us back yeah, to and, and that's where I get excited to think about this continuous engagement model and what you can do. So, um, where, again, where are we coming from? We've, we've been working in the e-learning uh, area yeah. for a number of yeah. years. And I actually, it dawned on me, I was trying to connect, like, how does the work that we do in e-learning versus events, like there's a connection there. And it's, it sounds so stupid because it took me like months to get my head around it. Like it all falls under the umbrella of learning. Like if you think about why do you go to an event, it's about learning something new. And that, like, and maybe that's from networking or meeting sponsors, whatever it is, like you, attending sessions, hearing from experts, there's a learning component to all of it. So where I see this continuous engagement model going is the prop, I'm gonna say the problem with events is that they are, like you said, they're, they're these few days or a chunk of time, you know, sporadically through the year. So how do you connect those, you know, those events on the calendar? Like there's chunks of time where there's not like nothing going on. And that's where I see layering and a strategy of like, you can layer in a community platform and instantly yeah. can listen yeah. to the actions on the community platform to tie the duration of time between events. And then maybe you want to add a learning management system on there. Maybe you've got this community of people, but you want to sell them yeah. courses or give them further learning opportunities. Like there's so many that, layers. I, I would tell you right now that most events, you know, have a element of that already, you know, that they, whether it be a simple like e-shop with just information, news, updates, um, but nowadays it, it is quite a bit more you know, sophisticated um, where they try and tailor their offering into in personalization, I suppose yeah. is the right term for it. Hyper, hyper personalization. personalization, yes. Yeah, and, and, and they're personalizing it to, you know, they know or we know already, um, you know, what, what your role is. Uh, what you what, why you came to the last event you know what are you selling something and you wanting to learn something are you are you um a supplier a a buyer a yeah. you know all of that so you tailor your um communication on their preferred platform which is becoming harder because nowadays yeah. people prefer all sorts of different platforms so yeah you know, where once uh, an email would do it i've got a whole generation of people who don't look at their emails that's yeah. not how they communicate. It's not they, they don't ever look at it. No, I know. It's weird. Like, for someone who lives in their inbox, I'm like, how can you not be looking at emails? I know. Yeah. Well, I, know I mean, but that's my generation. You know, it's yeah. like I look at my emails. Yeah. I've got a whole younger generation. If you don't get on their right platform, that can be a Slack channel. That can be a yeah. kind of WhatsApp. It can be a Telegram. It can be whatever oh, it is. Yeah. They, they will never get your information. So there's yeah. this personalization going on. But if you can then incentivize it with there is this what you bring this kind of like um, benefits if you like you know for, for yeah. engagement you know a reward system um, throughout the year you know until the physical event and then you kind of cash it in at the event you know you yeah. get there whether it's off tickets off drinks or off meals yeah, or whatever, yeah. it, whatever it is that is really that's golden and the. And there's another strategy in there. Like you're mentioning all these different platforms. 
what we call um, we, we call it like the master we can connect to like the master platform so the client you might be connected to all these different systems but if you ultimately want people coming back to that same like to the one platform mm -hmm. that's where you present what we call the wallet that's where this the person coming in can see their coin balance yeah, yeah. and yeah. so that the other systems are feeding those coins but we want them to come into this one system to do whatever actions that we're wanting them to do. And yeah, so, so, so that's just like a crypto wallet. You know, it's, it's actually it, like, it, it's feeding from any like yeah. from all different systems for yeah. different reasons too. Like if you think about the behaviors, like maybe it's connected to a payment, but maybe it's connected to submitting a type form survey. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's connected to entering something into Salesforce. Like you can start to get very creative mm -hmm. on what systems are you working with and then driving those actions. Yeah. And then and, 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 and these days with CRM systems are so powerful. I mean, I mean, they literally, wherever the whole touch point is, yep. it, just tinky, whatever. Tink, and it knows who you are, what you are. And, and that's, and, and that's really where like, when we come out and trying to kind of map out like what you can do is when we say we're a listening device, if you, if you really think about what that means, it means we're basically like everyone's talking about analytics and data. It's basically taking those data feeds and putting a coin value on it yeah. for identifying yeah. like these are the actions that we really want to see. So you're actually, you're re it's like rewarding the data feeds that you want to like make bigger. Yeah, yeah, you're you're, you're rewarding good behavior. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah. exactly. It's so e-learning. You know, it's kind of like yeah. you know, if you if you put the F in and you know, yeah, for you sure. Reward, reward, yeah. reward it. and it's kind of um, yeah, teaching new habits as well. You know, yeah, yeah. so absolutely. All right, then, Jeff. So, well, yeah, you know. Um, hey. My I really details. appreciate the conversation. Yeah, I really enjoy your feedback there, uh, Christopher. It's great to talk with you too, and I'll, I'll likely follow up with you on LinkedIn or something too, as well. And yeah, just, yeah, uh, let's let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah. Awesome. Right, Thanks a lot for the chat there, Christopher, and enjoy the rest <laughs> of the conference here. Bye -bye. Okay, take care. Bye bye.